Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It is the 11th of October and a pretty quiet week. As always, if this is useful, please uh, give me a like, subscribe, notify, comment and share. I did finish the uh, virtual full Ironman yesterday for help cure childhood cancer, which is why I look a bit tired today. Um, again, there was the URL. And just a big thank you, actually crushed the goal. So raised over $2,000 in the end for cure childhood cancer. Um, super happy with that. So appreciate everyone's support who could donate and who just helped uh, share the message. So new videos this week, part, Five of the Azure Masterclass was storage. This was nearly two hours long, really focusing all about kind of the core Azure storage capabilities. And then I released a, a short video on really controlling what guests can do and see within Azure AD. There's some new options for really controlling what their visibility to things is. So compute this week. So now the Azure Spot historic pricing and eviction is now GA. So everyone should be able to go and see this. So the way this works is, we'll actually jump over super quick. Okay, so if I just go and, let's say I wanna go and create a virtual machine and I'll say add VM. Now when we turn on this, spot instance option we can see it here so now if I say yes what it's actually going to do is give me this view pricing history and compare prices in the nearby regions so I can select this and now it's going to show me hey based on other regions nearby here's what the typical pricing is and it shows me the eviction rate so my eviction rate, for example, for West US is only zero to 5%. Remember the point of the spot instances are, we get it much, much cheaper. It's designed to let us consume the spare capacity. But if regular paying customers come along that want that capacity, we will essentially get evicted. So we get it super cheap and we can actually put in a, this is what I'm willing to pay but realize we'll get kicked out. So what this is gonna show me is historically, what would I expect to pay? And what are the chances I will actually get evicted? On the networking side, so now the standard load balancer and standard public IP support a resource group move. More and more resources now in Azure have these options of either moving to a different resource group in the same subscription, being moved between subscriptions and some support being moved between regions. Now it depends on the type of resource. So here for standard public IP, instead of load balancer, I can move it between resource groups in the same sub in the same subscription. So once again, we can kind of hop over and if we see this super quick, if I just go and look at a certain resource group, here we'll look at this one, if we select resources, if I just find, for example, a public IP, so here I've got this public IP. Once it's selected, now I have this move option. We can see it up here in the top corner. And you'll see it gives me options for move to another resource group, move to another subscription, and move to another region. Now those options will always be shown, but only the move to another resource group will work for a standard public IP or a standard load balancer. But we now actually go ahead and we have those capabilities. On the storage side, so the Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2, which sits on top of Blob, now has immutable storage. So this is the idea that it's really write once, read many. Once I've written the data, I can't delete it, I can't modify it. Maybe this is for legal hold, maybe it's for regulatory requirements purposes. So what's happening is we're seeing more and more blob features work its way into Azure Data Lake Storage, which adds that hierarchical namespace and posits compatible ACLs to it. Additionally, 
It also now supports it being Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2, the static website option. So if we jump over, now both of these you have to actually go and sign up for. But if I quickly go and just look at a certain storage account, so if we go and look, for example, at, where's it gone? So if I look at my SAT in for US, if I talk about that first thing where I talked about the immutable, if you go to a container and you just look at really anything, you'll see you have these access policies. An access policy under immutable blob storage lets me go ahead and add a policy either for a legal hold or for a time-based retention, where I actually put in a time. Once I apply them and then lock it, once it's locked, you, you can't remove the lock. It's now going to absolutely keep it for whatever that duration I specify is or that legal hold. Then we have the option for static website. Now, the static website is something I enable actually on the storage account itself. And we see this option here for static website. Now, I could always take kind of blob storage and make it publicly accessible, but we're not doing that here. With static website, you turn this on, you specify a default index document and a default error document. It then will go and create a dollar web folder. Now you're seeing blob here because this is not Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. If this was Gen 2, what it would do is actually in the ADLS Gen 2 namespace, create this dollar web folder. And this is where you go and update your content. You go and post your files that make up the website. Once you do that, actually you'll notice, well, I'm back in there for a second, I have no public access. There's no anonymous access to this. But if I go back to that static website, it gives me the URL for the website. I can now go to it, paste in that URL, and there's my really boring website that pretty much looks like the 90s. So now it's making a website available through my blob or now my ADLS Gen 2. So it's quite nice. Now, obviously, I can't do dynamic content, but if it's a HTML, if it's some kind of cascading style sheet, JavaScript, um, all those things are going to work really nicely. Azure Files Premium has had a 33% price reduction. So essentially just cutting the cost of that premium type of Azure Files, which gives us that higher performance. Miscellaneous, there's now a new conditional access option for Office 365. Previously, and there still is, there were separate entries for Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, Teams, whatever. So we had to create these separate app or join them in to a policy. And if a new app was created, we had to actually go and make sure we added a new policy around it. So with this capability, what we can now do is just select Office 365. So if we go over to here for a second, if I go and look at my conditional access. So I'm going to go to security. I'm going to go to conditional access. And I'm just going to create a new policy. And all I care about is this cloud apps or actions. If I select this and do select apps, what we now see is this brand new option for Office 365. So again, I could still be very specific if I wanted to. I could still search for kind of SharePoint, there it is. I could search for Exchange, et cetera, et cetera. But now by using just that Office 365, it's actually gonna make it a nicer all up experience. And if there were new apps added, it's automatically going to include those into it. So it's just gonna make my life a bit easier. And they announced there's gonna be a new region in Greece. So expanding the Azure footprint. There are a whole bunch of different portal updates. Um, they do a monthly kind of release article about the portal updates. You can just go and look at that. I'll link it in the description. But basically what we have is, well, there's new options about things like the refresh rate, the ARM template deployment experience has been improved, uh, configuration of always-on availability groups, new resource graph. Resource graph is phenomenal. 
lets me really query anything in Azure super fast. So there's an experience with the Resource Graph Explorer that's been improved. Object replication for blobs is there. You kind of see this through. Really a whole bunch of blob options now exposed through the portal. So improving that overall experience, making more and more things available. There's now a dark theme for the Azure mobile app. So you can kind of take a look at it. It's kind of gone from the white background to everything that's dark theme these days. And we kind of see that there. That's it for this week's updates. Uh, I hope this was useful. Until next week, take care.